In order to answer this question, you should have a basic knowledge on vectors, scalars and units. Scalars are quantities which only has a magnitude or size. Vectors are quantities with both magnitude and direction. Now study the following table. According to the table, you can observe that answer A is wrong because meters per second is also used to denote a scalar quantity speed and also a vector quantity velocity. Meters per second squared answer B is the unit of acceleration which is a vector quantity and answer C kilograms meters per second squared is the unit of force or weight which is also a vector quantity. Therefore, the correct answer is D, kilogram per meter cube, which is the unit of density and which is a scalar quantity. Second question. Once in orbit above the Earth's atmosphere, the engines on a space rocket are switched off. Which row of the table correctly states the resulting motion of the rocket and the law explaining this motion? Since a rocket is in a circular motion, velocity of the rocket is changing due to the change in direction of it. According to Newton's second law, a resultant force must be present in order to change the velocity of an object. In this situation, gravity or gravitational attractive force on the rocket by the Earth act as the resultant force. Let's look at the Newton's second law. Resultant force acting on any object is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum of the object. object. Momentum of an object is defined as the product of mass and the velocity. Therefore, if the velocity of an object changes, momentum also change. So in this question, correct answer must be answer C where motion of the rocket has a changing velocity and it can be explained by the Newton's second law. Third question. A sphere of weight 2.5 Newton floats in water with half of its volume beneath the surface. A force capital F is applied to the sphere completely immersing it in the water as shown. Which of the following is the minimum value of F? Since the sphere is initially floating, weight of the sphere is equal to upthrust on the object, which is 2.5 Newton. Therefore, when the object is completely immersed in water, upthrust should be equal to 5 Newton. So the extra force capital F, which is applied in downward direction should be equal to 2.5 Newton assuming that object is stationary. So the correct answer must be B. 1 times 2.5 Newton gives 2.5 Newton. Question 4. A ball rolls off a table with a horizontal velocity of 1.2 meters per second. The ball takes 0.9 seconds to reach the ground and lands a distance simple s from the table as shown. Which of the following expressions could be used to determine the value of s in meters? In this question, we have to find the horizontal displacement of the ball and the horizontal acceleration on the object is zero since there are no forces acting on the object in the horizontal direction. Therefore, we can simply apply S equals V times T, where V is 1.2 meters per second and T is 0.9 seconds. So the answer should be B. Fifth question. A sample of sea water is collected using a beaker. The sample contains some particles of sand 
which settle at the bottom of the beaker. Which of the following would result in a decrease in the time taken for the sand to settle? Decrease in time taken is a result of higher terminal velocity of sand particles. Terminal velocity of a particle depends on several factors and it can be given by the following relationship. Terminal velocity equals 2 r squared times g times rho s minus rho f over 9 eta where r is the radius of the particle g is gravitational acceleration eta coefficient of viscosity of the fluid rho s is the density of the particle rho f is the density of the fluid so according to the relationship terminal velocity increases as the sphere gets larger therefore answer a is not the correct answer as smaller particles of sand have lower terminal velocity so take longer to reach the bottom of the beaker also b is not the correct answer as a lower temperature would increase the viscosity and therefore increase the time taken for the particles to reach the bottom of the beaker since it's having a lower terminal velocity also answer c is not the correct answer as the sand particles take longer to reach the bottom of the beaker with a smaller terminal velocity so the correct answer must be d where lower viscosity of the seawater will cause to have a greater terminal velocity for the sand particle making it to reach faster to the bottom sixth question a graph of stress against strain up to the breaking point is drawn for four samples of wire a b c and d which sample of wire has both a low elastic limit and a large region of plastic deformation in order to answer this question let us investigate following stress strain graph for a particular substance which include all the points point a is proportional limit point b is elastic limit point c is yield point point d is the ultimate stress point and point e is the fracture point some in some cases point b and point c may overlap the region from o to point b is called elastic region since the material behave elastically which means when the applied stress is removed it return to its original shape or length beyond point b beyond elastic limit the material deform plastically which means it does not return to its original shape or original length and it will retain a permanent plastic deformation so according to this graph answer a is not the correct answer as it has a high elastic limit and answer b is not the correct answer it has a high elastic limit and a small region of plastic deformation also answer d is not the correct answer as it has a small region of plastic deformation so the correct answer should be answer c question 7 a water pump causes 200 grams of water to be ejected from the nozzle of a garden hose each second at a velocity of 3 meters per second which of the following expressions could be used to determine the minimum output power in watts required from the pump power output of this pump is equal to kinetic energy per second of the ejected water therefore kinetic energy is given by half mv squared 
so half times 0.2 kilograms times 3 meters per second squared over one second so the correct answer must be answer B answer A is not the correct answer because the mass has not been converted into kilogram which is required for a power in watts and answer C is not the correct answer because the mass is in gram and the velocity has not been squared also answer D is not the correct answer because the velocity has not been squared. Eighth question. A model rocket is launched and moves vertically upwards while still burning fuel to give a constant upwards thrust. The fuel runs out and the rocket reaches the maximum height at time capital T before falling back to the ground. Which of the following graphs could show how the acceleration simple A of the rocket varies with time simple t if the decrease in mass as the fuel burns is neglected. The only correct answer for this question is C as the acceleration is positive while the fuel is still burning. It then becomes negative while still traveling upwards as the only forces acting on it are downwards which are weight and drag. Answer A is not the correct answer because the acceleration should be constant as there is a constant upward thrust from the fuel. B is not the correct answer because the acceleration should be constant as there is a constant upward thrust from the fuel. The acceleration should become negative before capital T. Answer D is not the correct answer because the acceleration becomes negative as the fuel runs out and not at the maximum height. Ninth question. A student walked 12 km on a bearing of 135 degree and then walked 20 km on a bearing of 340 degree as shown. Observe that the diagram is drawn to the scale. Which of the following could represent the final displacement of the student from his starting point? In order to obtain correct answer for this question, you must draw a vector triangle. Since the diagrams are provided, are drawn to scale and identify direction and length of the resultant displacement. Remember, when drawing a vector triangle, vectors are joined so that they are connected in head to tail method. Or, oh, if you are drawing a vector parallelogram, vectors are connected either in tip to tip or tail to tail method. So, the correct answer for this question must be B. Answer A is not the correct answer since it has a wrong direction. Answer C is not the correct answer as it has the wrong length. Answer D also is not the correct answer as it has a wrong length. Tenth and the last question. A lift moves upwards from rest with an acceleration simple A. A student of mass 70 kg standing in the lift exerts a force of 800 Newton on the floor of the lift. Which of the following expressions could be used to determine simple A? The only correct answer for this question is C. To determine this, we can apply F equals MA to the situation. Therefore, resultant force on the student is given by force of flow of lift on student minus weight of student which is also equal to mass of the student into his acceleration 800 minus 70 g equals 70 a note that student is inside and moving with the lift therefore student has the same acceleration as the lift simple a 
Also note that 70 g means 70 times simple g which is gravitational acceleration and g does not denote grams. A is not the correct answer because the force of the lift on the student was omitted and the direction of the weight is incorrect. B is not the correct answer because the weight of the student has been omitted. D is not the correct answer because the weight and the force of the lift on the student are in the wrong direction. So that's the end of MCQ questions of this paper. If you want me to discuss any of the structured questions of this paper, please comment below. See you next time with another past paper discussion and another enjoyable learning experience.